Well, I've got something very special for you today. Uh, didn't expect this to actually work in my laptop, but I bought a the Oxford Interactive Encyclopedia uh, from a charity shop the other day. And no, say I thought it'd be nice because I do in enjoy in interactive encyclopedias, but I didn't expect this to work. I was just going to, you know, keep it to look after it and maybe give it to someone who could use it. But no, apparently, despite being made in 1997. Uh, this works perfectly fine in my Windows 8 laptop, and it's also quite interesting to look at because uh, this is, of course, um, uh, what you'd use for reference uh, information for like school projects and things before Wikipedia invented, and you could just copy and paste stuff from that. Uh, so yes, this is the Oxford Interactive Encyclopedia. It was because it named so because it was um, created in association with the Oxford University Press, which is a um, very powerful company in England, makes all the dictionaries and everything. And so I'm going to just pop it in now. Um, uh, see, I'm recording on my computer, and I apologize in advance for my um, uh, background, my desktop background. I um, didn't realize, obviously, if you have a phobia of wasps, I'm you're probably not having a good time of it right now. And uh, I visited, that's from the Eden Project, which I visited last week on holiday. Right, the thing's in now. So yes, the feature selection boasts rich, highly respected Oxford content, complete Oxford Dictionary and Thesaurus, which is quite massive. It also boasts instant online links to valuable internet sites, because obviously this was back when that wasn't the standard for software and things. Detailed timeline includes English as well as worldwide events, interactive worldwide atlas, powerful multi-path search engine, which doesn't sound like a good thing. Multi-path makes it sound like it's all branching and you have to click on several things to get to where you want. Hopefully that just means it's going to um, just uh, throw up multiple results for a search, which would be much better. Stunningly unique videos and photographs, colourful engaging interface and icons. Icons, they're basically boasting that they use pictures to show you where things are. And easy, easy to use media studio for slideshow presentations. Interesting. Anyway, uh, here's the thing. Okay. Welcome to the Oxford Interactive Encyclopedia. Uh, I'm just going to run it. I don't think I want to save it to my computer just in case uh, there's something that is completely incompatible with my PC. And, oh, here we are. Too. Perfect. So we have our introduction to the uh, Oxford Interactive Encyclopedia to the right. Uh, to the left, we have a lovely picture of Oxford. Um, uh, so you can, you know, pretend that you're actually uh, at the university studying for your important exa exams to become prime minister or something. And uh, there's a full A to Z list under here. Uh, which would take you a while to get through. See, the bar's not even moving as I scroll down. So yes, uh, ooh, it was a pretty lengthy uh, introduction to the whole thing. And, oh. Okay. Or maybe it's not. Sorry, that scroll bar is very weird. I hope it's not, you know, because I'm recording or something that's acting like this. Um, the path bar, yeah. This, I think we'll use this path bar instead of having to scroll through the millions of items, well actually it says 34,000 items, I'm not going to scroll through all that, but you can see you have different things, because you, you have articles, you have, that looks like a video thing, what's the video thing? Oh no, it's literally just an image by the looks of things, uh, showing equal and opposite reactions. Simple Newtonian physics there to get us started, and well, that's a diagram. You also have the camera to represent photos and a data table of actors and actresses. Let's have a look at that. Yeah. Okay. Fairly abridged list. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so like I said, that seems to be a bit of a roundabout way of getting to things. Let's actually have a look at some of the um, 
features, see what we can get from that dictionary. Yep, everything plays with a little video clip and a um uh, and a MIDI file because of course this is the um uh, uh, early days of um. Windows 95 computer graphics, where everyone was just sort of uh, going to town with everything they can do and putting um, a lot of uh, and putting everything they can into it. Do I have to? Oh, maybe I have to type in a, a word to um, find the definition of it. Uh, Oh, it's uh, already, um, it searches automatically. I thought I'd have to press something. I was a bit worried there for a moment. Uh, okay, so great, and, yep, that's, um, I think that's the traditional way of setting it out in Oxford Dictionary, because you have your weird symbolic way of showing how it's pronounced, then you have the noun bit, then you have the, um, uh, where, it, where the word comes from, the history of it, and a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, definitions. So, I can fully believe that there's the full Oxford Dictionary in here, here like, they, like they say there is, and just check what the thesaurus is like. What's the synonyms for great? Ah, well, if you're looking at it as, as a verb, shred, rub into pieces, pulverize, mince, grind, granulate, triturate. Well, that's pretty um, impressive. Uh, let's uh, move on to something else now, now quickly. Uh, Atlas. Now I tried the Atlas um, when I was testing this, and just to give you a heads up, it's not the most impressive um, uh, feature of this. So okay, we have our quite uh, not exactly detailed um, draw, draw map. It looks a bit like a um, uh, Microsoft Paint drawing, but as you can see, I can click and drag um, and get even closer, closer. Closer still, except that's that's the that's the highest resolution it will go. You can't get anything more detailed than that. Oh, well, how, oh no! See, it's it's going back out again. In fact, I seem to be zooming out now. So you see, you can't come in very closely, and you can't really see any more towns than these these ones displayed here. Okay, if I just press zoom in. But it was, yeah, not impressive. Although you can, uh, you can do a search for any city in, for any city in its data banks and see where how it works. But um, yeah, apart from that, and oh, and you can, and you can change the position with this uh, latitude and longitude uh, visualizer here. All right. And that seems quite well zoomed in. It doesn't it. But yeah, it. You can't really go into it for any detail, it just gives you a rough idea of where cities are, and that's pretty much it. So, it's not the best, I'm afraid. So, I'm not good on the atlas. What's the timeline like? So yes, this is the timeline. It's split into arts, sciences, and history. And uh, you have to scroll down to get a full feeling of everything. So, in just the year 1860, we have the or in just in the decade, the 1860s, perhaps the American Civil War, Livingston explores Central Africa, King Emmanuel II becomes first king of Italy, got quite a lot of things, emancipation of Russian serfs, etc., etc. Uh, how do I... Oh, what have I done? Oh, I, I pressed on something, and now we, we, we're learning what the la Land League is. An agrarian organisation in Ireland, founded in 1869, blah, blah, blah. Related art articles is the Irish Republican Boniface and... Charles Parnell, and you can move everything along with this thing here. Oh, although you have to, you have to let go. You have to click and let go in order to get everything to pop in. Uh, so 1899, first aspirin synthesized. Oh, and the um, the scales changed. It's gone from a decade scale to a yearly scale. That's not good. Uh, transatlantic radio transmission in 1901. That is that Marconi. I thought that was Marconi. I'll just check that. Oh, took a while to find the right thing. Oh, major events in the history of flying machines. That's not what I was looking for. Okay. Um, right, let's look at the... What's this flag thing? Oh, 
the Commonwealth of Australia are created. So I think the flag represents when a new country is uh, born. Just click to confirm that. Oh, it's all very old style um, uh, window boxes, isn't it? Yep, here's um, Australia and there's links to the Atlas and related media. We'll look into that later. And right now we have the flag with its constellation and its Commonwealth star and its flag of another country that's just there for some reason. Let's get rid of that. Uh, move along. How how recently does it go? Obviously, just before 1997, one should hope. Russian Civil War. Blah blah blah. blah, blah. Bom, bom. 1997. Oh, it's automatic time scale, so you can fix it in place if you want. Uh, prehistoric cave art discovered in France in 1995. I'm just looking at the year I was born now. So, World War II stolen art was. Oh, that's the 3rd of October 1994. What happened? What happened? What's the closest thing that happened to the day I was born? 5th of May 1995. Space Shuttle Rust, 6th of February. Uh, Nobel Peace Prize awarded 14th of October 1994. What's the... You're going to have to be more specific than that because the Nobel Peace Prize was, is awarded every year. Who was it awarded to? United Nations leave Somalia, 28th of February. Oh, but I've got to scroll down, don't I? Uh, things No, that's... Uh, uh, archaeologists unearth massive Egyptian tomb, 15th of May, 10 days after I was born. Uh, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any more information on that. Uh, oh, and there's there's bars uh, relating to uh, separate periods, like 1794 to 1997 was the communications revolution. This is all very well detailed. I could spend a lot of time just browsing this. And infectious diseases runs for a similar period. And technological revolution, 1950 to 1977. Okay, what else happens? Serbs shell market, NATO hits back. Oh, that's nasty business. All this human fossils found in Spain, eleventh of May. Mm. Okay, uh, anything interesting happening in world history? Ooh, uh, about six days after I was born, nuclear weapons non-proliferation treaty extended. That's good news. Um, Mandela signs Legislation for Truth and Reconciliation Commission in July. Oh, um, another nuclear test in French. I think European Union sets timetable for entry for Eastern European mem members at the end of 1995. Of course, we we in the future now know that only took um, um, 10 years for that to happen. Uh, so yes, that's the timeline. Uh, a bit fiddly, but um, all quite fun. Now, I'm not getting what the info links is. Let's try a uh, topic tree before I get um, asked questions. And another little MIDI file. Ah, the topic tree we see in here, it's basically just a, um, it's basically just like the A to Z, but it's all um, uh, organized into categories, which is a bit easier to navigate. So, good O. Geography. Alphabetical list of, list of cities, I think that'd be a bit too much. Exploration, eh? Uh, oh, there's literally, that, those are the articles. There's just exploration and latitude and longitude. Uh huh. Well. Okay, so. Oh, there's nice web links and a photo of Sebastian Cabo and Cabo reaching Newfoundland linked to the um, timeline. Uh, well, we've seen the timeline. What's the what does Sebastian Cabo look like? Uh huh. Oh, oh, he failed in his three-year attempt to find a water route across South America to the Pacific, but the Muscovy Company, which he founded, established profitable sea routes from England. All very nice. Uh, what does related media mean? Oh, that literally just jumps you to that. Henry the Navigator is also related to exploration, as you'd expect. Um, I'm not going to bother trying the web links because they're probably all um, uh, out of date by now. It's been nearly 10 years since this was made. Gosh, 10 years. Um, back to topics. Um, let's try one more. Let's try mathematics. Um, probability. As we, uh, probability or statistics. This isn't that great, uh, to be honest, to feel quite limited. I'm sure there's... I'm sure the Oxford um, uh, in Encyclopedia has more about probability than just probability. And let's see if there's any 
Titus hyperlinks in here. I mean, you got related articles to um, uh, to famous statisticians, um, quantum theory, which is annoyingly all about probability, which means it's practically impossible to study anything meaningful about it at this time. Anyway, let's try this media studio. I don't. I don't believe I uh, tried this bit before. Uh, oh, so this is this is literally just. Um, so yeah, you can just drag and drop media from uh, from the uh, library of things we've seen before and just drop it here and it's basically a, a very cut price Windows Movie Maker. Or, or alternatively, just Windows Movie Maker. Uh, I'm not going to bother um, uh, dragging a load of photos around to make it. In fact, there doesn't seem to be a, an easy way of getting to images from here. I mean, don't they have a... Um, I mean, there's sound record. You, there's a sound recorder like the one I'm using now. Title maker, sample media shows. Honestly, I I would be surprised if this um, gave us anything less uh, sophisticated than a Windows Movie Maker project. <coughs> uh, now to my favourite part that I found while I was um, exploring earlier, Planetarium. This is by far one of the most impressive features, and <laughs> oddly enough, the one not uh, described on the box. Ah, oh, it's already. Uh, it's already loading my um it okay Okay, so this is the planetarium. Um, okay, this is the planetarium, but it seems to be a little bit um, broken. Um, what what happens is you can um, you can uh, input a location, um, preferably one near to you, and it immediately it automatically reads the time and it uh, produces a star chart for you. But um, unfortunately, it seems to have uh, uh, crashed out a bit. Uh, you can oh. Ah, right, this is the problem. Um, because maybe I'm looking at the wrong type of day? Or, oh dear. Oh, well, this was really impressive when I tried the first time, but that's um, not a thing that's happening. Hmm. Can I get some help for this? Uh, this is opening up online help. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, sorry about that. I just had to uh, get rid of the help. Um, just had to get rid of the help menu there because obviously um, it tried to um, uh, get help from uh, the computer's uh, help support, which obviously has never heard of this thing ever. Uh, oh, oh, hang on a minute. We're beginning. We're seeing some stuff here. We can see a planet. Um, and we can see other uh, the names of other constellations too. I don't know why it's not showing up the stars, but uh, which planet is this? Uh, oh, that's the moon. Uh, so you can see it's um, showing its um, uh, its degree of ascension and its magnitude and all of its uh, all the facts and figures for it just at a click. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, so I think I see the problem is I keep zooming in too far. I think that's just the pro pro problem. I can't see anything properly. Ah, here we are. Obviously, you need to use this uh, compass at the top here to properly navigate. Uh huh. So, Sagittarius, Aquilus, Scythor, Cetus. Yes. Um, pity about not seeing the stars, but you sort of get the uh, general idea. Actually, this reminds me of a question I was thinking. Uh, 
Why do we consider the moon a strictly nighttime thing when half the time you only see it during the daytime? Like, I'm sure I could probably look out the window right now and see the moon, but that, uh, why do we associate it with night? I don't know. Um, so, we can also uh, we can also summon planets at a will, including um, Pluto, which obviously no longer considered a planet, but this um, obviously outdated thing doesn't know that. Pluto. Can we find Pluto? Ah, here it is. At, uh, at 9.19, it will be... Um, It'll be just uh, coming over the horizon here in Reading. Well, I'm not actually in Reading, but it's the closest city on this database. Uh, actually, can we have a look at the article for Pluto, just to uh, reminisce about the times when we uh, thought it was a planet and before it got reclassified? But, you know, that's life. <sighs> Outermost planet of the solar system, discovered by U.S. astronomer Clyde Tombaugh in 1930. Probably not having a... Um, uh, nice legacy now. Lies inside the orbit of Neptune, and this with its small size and mass, blah 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 blah. May have originally been a satellite of Neptune. Haven't heard that theory before. There's a photo of Pluto and Charon. Let's see what it looks like before New Horizons got there. Yep, that's all we could see of it before um, that uh, probe brought us a lovely picture of it, and it looked where it looked like it had a heart on its uh, surface. Mm. So yes, it's not very interesting, but it's quite a um, professional uh, make, and obviously um, its pages are very um, sort of limited in its um, in what it has. Obviously, um, Wikipedia has uh, reams and reams of information on Pluto, whereas this sort of just gives you the fair basics. So you know you probably wouldn't get into Oxford if you're using this as your primary reference source. I'm afraid. Hate to um, hate to bring you down. Uh, so I guess opening up the menu to see what we can have a look at. Star Quest, uh, that seems to be a sort of um, celestial photography instruction of the universe of hidden beauty. That's a sort of video gamey thing that I might play later. Picture tour, what's this? It's the sound of a liar. The complete tour. Well, are we going to look at every single photo? Um, possibly, we've gone from a picture of a church to the flag of South Korea, and some farmers. Okay, this all seems to be just geography-based ones, just alternating between pictures of the world and flags. Ooh, the Signal Hill Monument to Marconi, Newfoundland. Actually, speaking of Cornwall, I did see um, Marconi's um, station in Porthcurno, where he did radio broadcasts. A uh, flag of Andorra, always wanted to go to Andorra. First sewing machine, now we're going to historical ones. I think this is literally just random. Oh no, we seem to be finishing it. Oh no. Uh, I thought we were over, but no. I thought how many pins of demon. So this is just a diary entry. Okay. Photo of Saturn taken by Voyager 1. This is just... It's a random stream of consciousness from a very scatterbrained and clever man. Blimey. Uh... Is it just random, or is it going to be the same tour every time, I wonder? I don't know. Can we pause this? Uh, stop. And we got a picture of Dublin. Uh, research record. Um, I haven't done anything. Yeah, view the list of the places you visited in the encyclopedia. Don't bother with that. Make shortcut. Bookmark list. Thesaurus, been there. Guided tour. Well, that sounds interesting. Guided tour. Welcome to the Oxford Interactive Encyclopedia, your pathway to knowledge. Oh, uh, I'm Jackie Brambles, and I'm here to guide you on a personal tour through this powerful yet easy to use multimedia world of information. Yeah, stop selling yourself this up. is the encyclopedia's main screen, or the Tableau screen. Oh, this is just a how to guide in for videos. The large viewer on the right is where articles appear. Well, I've already, I've already explained this Beside bit, it is really the multimedia badly, viewer for displaying pictures. One, but, yeah, we get the idea. Righty ho. Um, what else was there? Tips and hints. No. Uh, layout settings. Word processor. Um, so yes. Um, can. Can the Oxford Interactive Encyclopedia outdo Microsoft Word? It's literally just opened up WordPad on my computer. That's cheating and you know it. 
Mm, not happy there, that. So it's nicking my help menu, which is absolutely no help ten years on, and it's nicking WordPad. <sighs> let's, let's look at some more calming images. Roman blown glass. Wow, that is very, um, much nice. I mean, you get the idea. I think the complete tour is a bit, um, pointless, and... And it's stopped on a Compton's map. I don't know what's special about Compton and his maps, but um, apparently it's the um, standard for the Oxford Dictionary. Can I go back to, can I go back to the, um, how we work the startup screen? Um, I think Exit's just going to boot me to menu, isn't it? But anyway, well, that's a sort of a ramshackle tour of the um, uh, Oxford Encyclopedia or the Interactive Encyclopedia. Uh, but yes, this th there are loads of um, interactive encyclopedias like this. There are some that are far more interesting than this one. I um, uh, don't know, uh, there's some really great ones um, marketed at children made by Dorling Kindersley, um, who publish very interesting reference books and even more interesting uh, multimedia stuff. Um, unfortunately, most of their stuff don't work on um, computers um, model Windows 7 and afterwards because they, their graphics relied on 32-bit systems, not the 64 and 64X we're used to now. Um, but if you can get it to work, they they were really good. They, I mean, they really exploited this uh, the new 3D um, gra graphics engines that opened up to them uh, with the um, with the rise of Windows, and uh, and they just sort of did a sensory overload of um, of uh, presentation and uh, things, which um, was re really great. And obviously, it's quite interesting to see how it was before everyone had an internet connection or um, before anyone really understood the power of the internet. Really, for uh, for reference and that sort of things. Actually, just out of interest, I am going to go back to. Um, uh, I'm going to go back to the, the, um, what we could have find on the internet with some of those outdated web links. Uh, what? Uh, pick an article, any article. This is the grand finale. Um, I'm spoiled for choice. Uh. What's likely to have a web link linked to it? Uh, the country of Algeria. And the Algerian page, or Algeria geography, let's go with Arab.net. Oh god, what if I, what if I infect myself with malware on this? Uh, disclaimer, blah, 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 blah. yeah, um, good thing you warned me there. Oh. Oh, I haven't launched the online service yet. Well, never mind then. Oh, 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 we can hear, listen, uh, I didn't see this before. We can actually listen to music as well as look at I images. Let's, let's finish up on that. The National Anthem of Algeria. to experience a national anthem is through a p piano based MIDI file. Hmm. Oh, and we're back to our multi concept. Well, I think we sort of get the idea of this um, uh, encyclopedia. It's a very nice, um, it's a very nice um, uh, setup, very 
with lots of detail. Like I said, I'm pretty sure we got a full dictionary. Atlas a little disappointing. Timelines are um, pretty fascinating. I don't know what Infolinks does. Topic Tree was a bit disappointing. I'm pretty sure you could make something um, pretty decent on a multimedia presentation, but I don't really have the time. Planetarium's okay until the stars disappear.